This is a topic I'm super passionate about. I was on a roll. <laughs> I tell you, I believe in this stuff so much in terms of thinking limitlessly and uh, trying to get people to do that. It's very hard to do it for some, but I give two examples of why, uh, what limitless thinking, how it, how it looks like when you, when you're thinking limitlessly, what that can look like when it comes to setting some goals and dreams in your life. And then what it looks like when you can, I think examples are really helpful. And so, uh, hopefully you'll find this beneficial, but, uh, I'm really passionate about this and I give you some great tips on how to do that. So let's, let's hear it now. It's a shorter episode, but it doesn't need to be long. It just needs to be like delivered quickly and, and passionately. And that's what I've done here. So enjoy. Hello, 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 and happy Friday here. Uh, I hope you're excited for the weekend. It's like here in Virginia, spring has sprung. So we had a day yesterday that was in the early or low, I should say, not early, 80s. So uh, it was actually hot when I took my dog on his walk. Uh, so I was quite heated when I got home, but it, it felt good. It felt good. It was like, I want to get out on the deck and sit there and it's all the trees are budding. And if anything puts a mind in a good mood, I think it's going from winter to spring. Uh, although I do love fall, so but I just don't like what's after fall. That's the problem. So today's episode, uh, lesson learned episode, I want to talk about limitless thinking and give you a couple of examples of when you think limitlessly versus when you limit yourself or set boundaries. And it's really all about dreams. And when you dream, well, first of all, let me say a lot of us don't dream. That was me, never had my own dreams, just like working hard, bringing home the bacon, supporting my family. And really my dreams were more about my kids' dreams, like making sure that they grew up happy humans and making sure that I was giving them the life that uh, would would groom them essentially to be good humans, that would give them um, the foundation in which they could grow and and really contribute to, to society and be happy and 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 chase their dreams. So isn't that kind of funny? Like I I don't dream for myself, yet I want dreams for my kids. And I think a lot of us who are moms do that. Uh, we sacrifice ourselves for that. And we don't even think about it. We don't know we're doing it, uh, but we are doing it. And I think uh, what happens is we just don't realize that we need to be not only a role model of good habits and uh, doing the right things in terms of being ethical and being honest and being good to people and being kind to people. But we need to be role models in living out our dreams and being examples of that. And one of the things that I have chosen to do in the latter half of my life is exactly that, be a role model. And maybe it's a little too late for my kids, <laughs> although I do encourage them as adults to chase their dreams. I want to be a role model for my grandkids. These little minds that absorb everything like sponges and they're out there uh, navigating life. My oldest one is 12 now. So she's really getting into the tweens where there's peer pressure and self-doubt, a lot of that stuff coming in. Uh, it happens to all young children <laughs> when they lose the 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 age of creativity and imagination and start to go into the realizing um, that other people are watching and feeling like they're judged and, you know, all that starts happening. And it didn't happen when we were little kids. So this episode is about using limitless thinking in dreaming and coming up with dreams, no matter how crazy they may seem. And that's what I want for you. So I would hope that your action after you listen to this episode is to sit down in silence and just brainstorm. Let your, your pen or your pencil at the end of your fingers, just start writing. No judgment what comes out. 
let it flow. The crazy, craziest ideas that you have that come to mind that you'd like to do. It doesn't mean you're going to take action on them. It just means you're putting them down on paper. You're allowing the flow to come through you. You're allowing the to your part of your brain to access and connect with something deeper within you that often when we're in our busy day to day, we don't ever go there. We don't allow ourselves to go there. We can't go there when our mind is so busy thinking about our to-do list. And what happens is when you think with limits, your dream list almost becomes a to-do list or a chore list. And I want to use an example. And I did, I want to uh, mention a previous episode I did and I was looking back I remember I had done it and I was like I thought I did it a lot longer ago but I did it actually January 7th so it's episode 292 and it is what I do with my students create a wish list I call it a wish list because it starts out as wishes aka dreams and that turns into goals and I have a process for doing that so I have a couple of good examples of students who went through this exercise one limited in thinking even though I said think limitless, it's it's hard to do. It really is hard to do. Sometimes you need a coach to walk you through it. She eventually came out the other side, but it was a process and it took her time to get through to that limitless thinking. So the the limitless thinking is to remove any boundaries, I, I call them boundaries, um, that you think are keeping you locked in to only having dreams within this set of boundaries, right? I just, let's use like, since sports, I'm a big sports person and basketball NCAA tournaments on right now. So think of it in terms of a court, right? So you only can see within the court and the lines on the edge of the court, which are out of bounds, you know, some of our dreams are, are across those bounds. We, we we don't have any knowledge of them. We don't have any experience of them. We don't have the money for them. We don't uh, have the belief in them. So all that is outside, number one, of our comfort zone. Think of that basketball court, number one, as your comfort zone. But also think of it as your current circumstances, your current bank account, your current, uh, uh, like where you live and what you think is possible for you. That's the court and the boundaries. And most of us play inside that little court and we don't even think outside the court. It's not accessible to us. And so I want you to think outside the arena. That's what this exercise is. Totally unknown. So you're just going to write down the, what you probably think is the impossible. And that's what we do in this exercise. Limitless thinking is exactly that. It's beyond it's to the moon. It's really way beyond that little basketball goal, ball court that you're playing inside. And so uh, let me use two examples uh, and then I'll wrap it up because this doesn't need to be a long ep- episode. So one student, when she was going through this exercise, we had a coaching call and she said, my list feels just like a chore list. Well, that is the first sign that you're thinking within your court. And disallowing your brain to get creative and imaginative. And we often say, we're not creative or I'm not creative. I used to say, you know, when you say that over and over to yourself in your head, you make it true. (laughs) Because when you say, I'm not creative, I don't have any imagination, I don't know, all those things shut off your ability to be creative because you've already made that decision. So your brain doesn't even try to be creative. So first of all, you say, I am creative. If you're, if you're coming up with a wish list, which is just a brainstorming list of crazy wild ass ideas. And if it feels like a chore list, then you are saying to yourself, I'm not creative. So create an affirmation that says I am creative and new ideas come to me every day. Start doing that and then go back to sitting down to do your list after a week. And I bet you your brain will automatically attune to the more of the imagination. One little trick for you in in that. But yes, she 
could not come up with a dream. Not one single dream. And the idea is to make this list exciting. Even if you think you can't do it, if you could do it, what would that make you feel? Pretty darn good. That's what your list should be. You could think about who you want to do it with. But again, don't limit yourself. They could be new friends you haven't met yet. A lot of us go to do a dream list and we're like, oh, my husband, he wouldn't like that. He'd never want to do that. An example of something on my dream list is to have a farm one day. <laughs> what am I thinking? But I love animals. And maybe that'll show up in some other way. Maybe it's not a farm, but it's being around animals. It's volunteering at an animal shelter. But that was a childhood thought that I had. I would collect all the stray animals and nurse them back to health and and then be really sad when I had to give them back. But I loved animals. My parents thought I would be a vet, but I, I couldn't ever do, be a vet because, first of all, I get sad when I see animals suffer. And secondly, I faint at the sight of blood. But just think about when you were a child, what did you do that made you really happy? Those might be where your dreams reside. So the good news is that the student... I gave her direction on what she needed to do to open the access to her brain that will allow her to be an imaginative. And she was able to do that and ultimately came up with an idea that was really dormant inside of her, very powerful new purpose she discovered. So I was so thrilled for her because some of us can get there more quickly and some of us just can't. And you just need to ask for help or you need to get guidance. You need to find a way to access that part of you. But it comes from sitting in the silence and not saying things to yourself that prevent it from happening. Getting away from the busy, stopping. I did a quick little video as I was doing my walk about a quote saying disconnect to connect. And that's what you need to do. You need to disconnect to connect to the inner wisdom inside of you. And then to even furthermore, connect to those dreams that you desire and the opportunities and people that await you on that, on that path. And so I wanted to also give you an example of a student that I'm working with now who came up with a great list, was easy, much easier for her, but she allowed herself to think limitlessly. Maybe I emphasize that a little bit more with this group, but what I will tell you is that she came up with the most amazing idea and it was about her, well, really actually goes back to her mom dying recently. And that's so sad. And when you can make a purpose around something that really means a lot to you, wow, that's powerful. And I can tell you that when you have a purpose that has that meaning, you know, surrounding it, um, driving it, you will do the activities to get to that goal that that you've created, that dream that you've created, which ultimately becomes a goal, a set of goals that you work on to get to that dream, to, to um, ultimately achieve that dream. Might take a little while for some dreams, right? But, you know, who knows how long? Some people say, well, it'll take too long and I don't have that time. How do you know how long it can take? We have no idea how long it would take. We assume it'll take a certain amount of time, but it might take less time. And what if it could take less time? And the other way to think about it is, wouldn't you rather spend the rest of your time working on a dream that you're excited about and love than sitting around not doing it and just thinking it's not possible? Which path would you choose? I certainly know I'd rather die doing my working on my dream than die thinking I wished I had worked on my dream. But anyways, she she had this great idea about having her mom's house, a childhood home that she grew up in and turning that into an Airbnb so she and her sister could keep the home. And then what I love about it is it not only allows her and her sister to keep the home, it allows other families to enjoy her childhood home, which I'm sure her mother 
is so happy about wherever she is. And I know her mother's spirit is here watching over her and guiding her in a way. And so how amazing. And I I asked her, I said, was this a thought before you sat down and did this exercise? And she said, no, it kind of came up as a result of thinking limitlessly. What are the possibilities? When you probably before you allowed yourself to be imaginative in the exercise, what in this scenario could possibly be happening is, oh my gosh, we have our childhood home. We have to sell it. How sad sitting in the sadness, sitting in the grief, thinking you're going to lose this valuable part of your history. But instead you step back. You're like, I'm not playing in this court. I'm leaving the arena and I'm going to see what's out there and what's possible and what I can attract into my life that is exciting and makes me feel good and makes me want to get up every day and do the thing that gets me one step closer to that. So that is so exciting, right? Right? So what I ask you to do as your homework assignment, start to dream outside the arena what's possible. Stop thinking about what you can't do and start thinking about what you desire to do. And that's the only action I'm I'm asking you to do. But when something excites you, I will tell you, you will more than likely start taking action. And if it's a little scary, get support to help you get over those mindset hurdles and obstacles that are kind of standing in your way from those dreams. Because a lot of us need support. I mean, I've had a coach for four and a half years. And I'm like, I just, every year I keep joining his mastermind. It's business focused, but there's so much more. It's it's such a mindset game, a mindset play on what keeps us in our on our court, playing small. And uh, yeah, find somebody that has your dreams, get ideas, and start writing them down and believing that they're possible and taking tiny steps to make them happen. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next week or talk to you next week. I always say that. See ya. If you're on YouTube, hi, you see me, but next week uh, I'll be on audio on my podcast platform. So no seeing there. All right. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into the Living Your Spark second half podcast. If you'd like to watch my guest interviews, you can find the video version of this podcast on my Not Your Average Grandma YouTube channel. Also, you can check out what I have going on at the moment by going to my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you like this episode, please mention it to a friend and don't forget to leave a review so I know the topics you like best and can bring you more of that content in upcoming episodes. Last but not least, remember to always listen to that inner voice that will never steer you wrong and make living from the most sparked place possible your biggest priority. When we do that, we make the world a better place.